Hello and welcome to another episode of Mixed Mowers and in this episode we're going to be looking at a little tiny um, red lawn mower. I think it's a lawn flight, I think, I'm not quite sure. It's got a Honda engine on top but it's got a hole in the deck. So much like the other one, but I'm going to have to repair a hole in the deck this time to get this lawn mower up and in a sensible condition. So I've got some fiberglass filler back here with some metal gauze which I'm going to try and plug the hole up and um, use body filler, sand it all back, respray it and have it looking good. The engine runs actually sweet as a nut, doesn't need um, work on at all, it needs a service but that's about it. So without further ado let's get down and dirty and let's check out this little tiny lawnmower. But before I go don't forget that the 200 subscriber giveaway um, is running and running until next Friday and you can get one of these Mick Mowers mugs with the small engine nation also. You don't get it with a coffee inside that's purely for me. Also you can get a key ring and or a sticker. So all you have to do is look in my Honda HRX video, my most recent one, and just simply tell me what new part did I replace on the lawnmower to get it working. So here it is. And the, uh, the main issue, it's got a bit of scabbing over the far side, but it's got a hole in the deck just here, put my finger straight through it. It's only a small hole, so I'm hoping it's not too brittle anywhere else. And I'm hoping just to put some metal gauze up inside there, fiberglass fill it once it's all been sanded back and treat it. But before I do that, I've got to take the engine off, the height adjustment's got to come off, all that sort of stuff, so I'm back down to bare, bare bones. I'm hoping to leave the wheels and axles on if possible, but if I don't, um, then that's what it is. I'll just fire it up for you. It's not been started at all. It's got one of these automatic chokes on. Put it over to choke. Okay, so now she's in the shed. I want to turn the fuel off if I can get to it. It's a bit sticky in places there, that's it. And I'll remove the HT lead as well. So that's all off. Let's just check the air filter out. If I can get to it. It's not too bad at all. It's used, well used, but I'll be putting a new one in. Okay, so as I say, the only issue with this is literally, let's put you down a bit. I think Riley Boy's been touching my tripod, it's all been dark and stiff. So there's the hole when it's in question. Just there. It's not too bad, but by the time I get the paint off of it, get it all sanded back, find the strongest points and what have it, we'll be good to go. Okay, so I nearly failed at the first hurdle. I couldn't get that, I could not get that blade off, but um it started to round off ever so slightly, so I was very lucky. Um, I found a, a different style socket to put on, which got it off, so I'm very glad in that respect. I got my tub just to the right hand side, just down here somewhere, so just behind my, my table. So all the little bits and pieces that are going to come off will go straight in there. The blade is in good condition, actually. It's got a really good edge on it. Once well, just just shotting back off and tied up and cleaning, but apart from that, it's in good nick. Okay, so we have hit a bit of a hurdle straight away. Um, the blade boss was actually broken, and it's been broken a little while. I can tell that because I work because I work on a railway. When we have broken rails, you can tell if something's been broken for a while because of a rust. As you can see, it's all nice and clean in here, and that's rusty there. So that's actually been broken a long time, which is a terrible shame. So I have to either get a new one or try and source um, a replacement. It's actually overling shape too which is not good um, but it needs this star configuration so I have to go online and have a look at that the pulley is fine and it's got a keyway in there which is beat to death I'm not quite sure what's the right keyway for it either but uh, I should keep it anyway that's what it had it may have hit something you never know but um that's my next chore is to try and locate a boss for that. So that would be an online job. Just going to remove the belt, have a tidy up. There's a bit of damage underneath here to the plastic. I would say he's probably hit something, this fella, who had it before. That's probably why it come to me. But it's running okay. Not missing any timing. 
Okay, that was a bit of a job in itself. Just trying to get the engine off. I tell you, that was on there pretty well. Next thing I want to do is just remove this dead man's handle um, cable. Give it a bit of a twist up if we can. Bit of jiggery poke. Not come off yet. So let's remove the cable first. Pinch your two ears in. Retract it back. And then that goes up and away. I've got two cables to remove. I've got to remove the drive, the drive which can stay on for now. <coughs> but it is particularly bad underneath here. I do warn you. As in not rust, as in just compacted with grass absolutely everywhere. So now I think that engine will just pop off. Which it will. And there's the underside. As I say, all of this is all compacted. I need to try and remove this cover. At the moment, I can't even see for grass how it's attached. I can't even locate the screws at all. I'm guessing there's something in here, possibly, but I can't even locate that. So let me have a bit of a clean up and then I'll come back. Right, so that's all that came out of that one um, drive belt cover. It's still underneath here. Literally, I filled the whole shed up. Should go outside to do it, really. But all of that came out of one cover. Can you believe it? Absolutely mental. So I'm going to try and keep this if I can. But if it don't, it don't. So it ain't going to lift off. But that's like it's sealed there. That's pretty good. Just remove any excess that wants to lift off. I need to remove the height adjustment. So it's one bolt there and a couple of two or three here to take that off. Just so I get rid of this bar to get inside there. So I'll remove that now. That's a longer one. So I just dropped on the floor. Bring my tub in. One at the back here. Starting to give it secrets up now. That's just dropped down. That one I don't want to come undone for some reason. Let me just see if there's a if there's a nut underneath it. I don't think there is. It should be welded. There it goes. So that's that assembly that we clean off in a bit. Here's my box. Okay, with that now taken apart, that should now lift up to a certain degree. I want to go over that, you know, that'd be good. Just so it's out of the way. I don't want to have to remove it all. Without giving enough workspace just to get involved in this lot. I'm getting the air compressor, lift off some of this um, paint where it wants to come off, scrape it all back, and then I can start the uh, cleaning process. Okay, so that's the extent of all the damage um, where the paint is flaking off on the top. The wheels are going to have to come off because there's more damage around here. It's in, I say damage, is paint flaking. But I just want to treat this um, this area first, get that half done, get it in a, in a state where I can at least do something with it. The rest of it is completely solid. There's no holes anywhere else. So I'm going to prepare this area here on the top side, then turn it over and prepare it on the um, inside as well. That's tied that area up nice, nice and neat now. No nicks in it, there's a little tiny nick just there. I'll break that off. So that's now ready for treatment that side. What I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna put some rust treatment on it very quickly, and then I can turn it over and do the other side as well.
So we've got a hole here, as you can see. We've also got a hole just here and just here. It's just where it's weak. So I'm glad I use the, uh, the angle grinder with a brush on it to pick that up. So that's not a problem. I can bridge bridge a piece in there and just run that in with some filler. So just going to treat this area now for rust. I put some um, some metal cleaner on it as well, and just going to um, just treat that for rust. Okay, that's now treat for rust. Let that dry off, and then we'll um, turn it over. There's Mrs. P. She's out there with popsicle. That's it. A little poppy of her mummy. Look, see. Yeah. She's chilling out with mummy. And uh, I might retreat this side again. Now that I've blown a hole through the side, I did. I did already retreat it, as you can see. I did sort of give it initial treatment. It's gone black, so. That looks good. But these bits here I'm not concerned about. I'm glad I've got this bit here, which is the actual lip of the, the body, which is what I want anyway. That, that, that's solid, so that's good. Right, I'm just going to treat this bit just here. I'll just give it a sand and a clean off. I'm just watching a little bit of uh, Roy the boy in the background. He's repairing a strimmer at the moment, so. Best of luck with that, Roy. I hope you get it going. It is a McCulloch, so you've got your work cut out for you, buddy. So I'm just going to treat this area, as I say. Just so it gets a bit of a head start. This is one of the other worst areas. <coughs> that needs to be done. Just work that in. Let it do its business. Just gives it a bit of a, a bit of a head start, and then I'm not. I won't be doing this bit too much later on, so this will really cure up well. I've gone right back to where the paint stopped flaking, and you can see there's a silver line around it, so it's got a good, good um, bond. Excuse me, there, Roy. Let me put you over out of the way a bit. I'll continue watching you though. He's a good old lad, old Roy. He does try hard. Got a good channel. I do talk to him quite regularly, actually. Well, he rings me to be fair. I mean, I don't ever ring him, but he rings me quite a lot. Mainly for help and advice, you know. How do you repair a pull cord or gasket and diaphragm or a three and a half classic Briggs? How do you fix one of them? That's what, that's, that's the normal questions I get off of him. Only joking, Roy. Right, let's give that a bit of time to cure up. Um, I'm off out with Mrs. P to London tonight. I'm gonna go and drop Josh off to a concert to go and see a, see a show. And then me and Mrs. P are having um, dinner in London, which is not very often we, we tend to go out because of Riley. Not because of Riley, but because of Riley's needs. We don't tend to get out very often at all, if not, if, in a, if ever. We very rarely go out at all. So we've got a babysitter tonight, just for a little while. We'll be back about one o'clock in the morning, I expect something like that. But it'd be nice just to spend a bit of time with Mrs. P, because she works very hard and daily running the house and looking after Riley's needs and all that sort of good stuff. Okay, so this is the stuff I'm gonna be using. Um, it's a fiberglass kit effectively, um, and it's good for metal, wood, brick, stone, and ceramic, so that's good enough for us. All you gotta do is cut the sheet where you want, give or take, mix your resin up, patch it, or paint it over, patch it, and just keep going until the gap is covered. Okay, so in the kit, you're gonna get your fiberglass matting you're going to get your hardener always pay just to give it a good squidge before you undo it just to make sure it's all mixed up you get some gloves very important indeed you get your resin you get a little measuring cup you get a little brush and some stone sticks and in true fashion I can't even get my hand into that so good job I got my own they do for Riley boy they will I've got my own ones, which are extra large, of course. Because you don't want me to get on your, on your skin at all, full stop. Right, all I'm going to do is just take this out of the wrapper, and then we're just going to um, have a little look to see what sizes we get. I don't know if you get one sheet or two, or what you get in here. Okay, you get two sheets, I'm gonna put one out of the way. 
And I get one one long sheet. That's all you get. But all I'm going to do is just going to cut roughly what I think I need. I'm going to go straight across there for now because I can always, if it's too long, I can always bridge a piece to make up the rest of the body for it. Right, so there's the hole we need, or we got. So literally, that wider piece will probably, I don't put it down too low, that's still just a little bit, that has gone, I think. It has gone, yeah. So that big piece, effectively, will bridge it. So if I cut that straight in half, roughly half, if I cut that about there, say, put that other small piece to one side, and that big piece, I'm gonna be more, yeah, about there, that'd be fine. So just roughly push it into place. And then what I'm then gonna do, I'm gonna, once, once that bit's gone on and half set, I'm then gonna back that up. I'm just gonna shave a bit off of that. Not a lot, probably off this, off this longer side. And then I'm going to back that up with another piece just in there, just to, just to support it. Okay, so that's all cleaned up now, and now all I've got to do is just mix this stuff up. There's instructions on the can of how to do it, it's not particularly hard. All you've got to do is for every 10 millimetres of resin, you want roughly a pea size bit of hardener. That's, that's the ratio. So I might need for that area there, possibly I'm going to go for about 50 mil, so I'm going to need five peas. So there's 50 mil of my resin. I'm going to pour that straight into that tub just there. Put my cap back on. This smell reminds me so much of my old job on the river when I used to hire out boats at Arundel. You have to get the chance to nip down to a little town called Arundel. It's in West Sussex. There's a boat hire place, it's all changed hands now from when I was there. But you can hire a self-drive motorboat on the River Arum for about an hour. It's a fantastic experience, take the kids and what have you. It's a brilliant experience. Right, so that's that done. Now, just give us hardener a bit of a squidge. And we want um, 50 mil, so we want five pea-sized dollops. Let me just undo that. Five pea sized dollops. And one, two, I'll call it three, four, five. So that's for five pea sized dollops. Put my cap back on and just start to mix that in there. This will, go, this will, this will cure inside 20 minutes. So you need to work relatively quickly which is what I said to you about having it all prepared ready. So tip it into the corner, just start knocking it back, just until um, it's all gone the same colour. Now this is quite toxic, so make sure you're well ventilated to do this. Okay, so now our resin's all mixed up, all I wanna do is just with this little brush they give you, we don't give you a proper brush, just wet the whole area around that's gonna be treated. Make sure you get all the nooks and crannies and all the bits and pieces. You can always sand it off if you put too much on, so don't be too concerned. You want to overlap slightly. Right, I just want to bring in the first, the first piece of fiberglass. And just literally going to lay that on top. Find where the hole is. Start to form it to the shape you want. It's going to be about there. The brush they give you is not really man enough for task. And then start to work that in to all areas. Start to push it in. And it will start, it will start to hold, start to form its shape. So push it in. You don't really want to use your hands to touch this stuff. Start to soak it all in. This brush is no good for what they give you. You need a, a, an inch brush, really, to put some weight behind it. I'm now going to bring in my second piece. 
So what it's going to do is going to reinforce that. Just give it a bit of a fold just to make it a start. And that's going to go just in there. And again, all I'm going to do is pour a bit of fiberglass on. Just to make it get it started because the brush is no good. And just start to work that in. Oh, it does remind me of my childhood. I was 11 years old when I first started my first part-time job on a rail, on the um, on a river. 11 years old, 12 hours a day, 15 pound a day cash in hand. Those were the days. Well, I'm happy with how that's formed. I'm just going to be quite liberal now because I want to make sure I get a good seal all the way around. So that's had about five minutes and it's now starting to cure. You can see it is just changing color. And down here, you can now see it's actually bridged the gap. It's a bit of bubbling just there, but again, once that goes off, that, that can all be sanded. Just don't want it on that height adjustment really. I'll put a bit of cloth over that in a minute. Um, but you can see that's now started to bond. Um, and then when we go to, to fill it, I'll just put it slightly higher and that'll be good to go. Okay, so just been and cut my next door neighbour's uh, grass, which I, I cut regularly for. I just use that um, that red snapper actually, one that's out there, um, and it cut really well. Okay, so that's had about half hour. It's all a bit of pooling just here. It's not quite gone here, but just here, that's now solid. I'm going to leave this to cure overnight now, so it goes right off. It's still tacky in places where it's a bit damp. But, so I'm going to wipe this excess off, just here, put that there, that's now repaired and gone solid. Underneath, yeah it's, yeah, it's gone off there, let's see. Still a bit, a bit soft there, but as you can see it's formed a lovely edge and that's now taken. And being a Saturday, Got my little Riley boy with me today, so he'd be helping out around the shop, which would be cool. Shop? Daddy's workshop, yeah. What, here? This is called Daddy's workshop. Oh. Yeah, it's cool. Well, I drive? We'll go outside a bit later on today, yeah, definitely. Okay. We've got lots on today, actually. We've got to do the lawn flight. I've got a McCulloch three and a half classic coming for a service. It's not running, but you don't need me to see me um, do a service on one of them. They're pretty straightforward. I've got other videos that will tell you how to break them down. So we'll do that. Have you had breakfast this morning? Yeah. What do you have? Treddies? Yeah. Cool, was it nice? Yeah. Good. So you had that. Um, so Riley will be popping in and out throughout the day. Oh. Popping, yeah, well, mooching about. Who? You will. Poppy? Not, there were poppies out there as well, so yeah, just, let her, just let her out of the kennel. Go have a look, go and find a poppy. So without further ado, Riley, yeah, let's get down and let's get. Let's get dirty. Let's get dirty. And let's get on with this lawn flight lawnmower. Okay, so. No, 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 leave, leave a sticker on. Don't go taking stickers off. We want to try and keep that as much as we can. You're a little monkey today. So, um, um. well, so last night I treated all of the rust areas that were bad, and in particular, that bit there, right, boy, didn't we? Yeah. So, I've now got to just get an angle grinder onto there with yeah. a couple of lips on it, just to, just to bring that back. That can then be filled, and that's the worst spot. But that, as you can see now, is cured. And that's as solid as, as the day it, it, was, it was built. So um, the underside of it, the side of it, as you can see, just wants a bit of a sand off as well. And that's all now fully cured and repaired. So that's good to see. That's all solid. So what the next step is is literally I want to take the front axles off because there's paint flaking all over it. Back axles off, handles off, all that sort of good stuff. Get it right down just to the base. And then once it's all done, I can then peel all the paint off. Okay, so that's now all stripped off. And I'll tell you, this is actually quite a well-built little lawnmower. This yeah. this whole device here is what goes on the back um, to cover the drive. It's all one piece, and you have to take the whole lot off just to get at it. So if your belt came off or you wanted to change your drive cable, Ow. you would have a right job on your hands. So next thing I'm going to do is get, get my drill out. All this paint flaking stuff, it's all got to come off so I can then treat it. Um, yeah, you can see, of course you can see Riley, you can have a little look. Yeah, see it's all coming, see it's all, hi guys, yeah it's all pulling, see it's all flaking off, see? 
Sorry. So you're gonna get in there, are you? You're gonna try and get right, get down, get dirty, are you? Fair enough. Where? All in there. Oh, that's all got to come out, Riley boy. That could be your job, can't it? Hey. Okay. So that's that. So now the body is completely, dirty. completely empty. I'm gonna sand it all off. It's just the little areas in particular oh, no. I, I couldn't, I couldn't get to. Let me swing around. Just like round here by the front axle. Hang on bud, just round here, all this stuff here, it's all got to come off you see, so I can't, I can't leave it on there because that's all just going to fail. So I'm going to scrape it all off and then get it all sanded all back um, to a decent metal where I can then treat it for rust. Right, so that's now all been rust treated and also the patch on the side that had the hole in, that's now nice and level. I'm going to put a bit of filler in there, thank you Riley, a bit of filler in there just, just, just to bring that step up. Um, because it's not quite not quite as flush as I would like, so just knock a bit of filler up. Um, and they recommend when you're using filler, I'm using uh, where is it? Here it is. I'm using all-purpose uh, body filler for cars. And when you're using this stuff as as normal, you get all the spatula bits and pieces of hard and what have you. And you want roughly about a 50 pence piece size in di in diameter to a piece size of. Um, Hardener. So I'm just going to mix some of that up and then get this um, added to this size here, to this side here. Um, let it go off, sand it off, and then um, that's nice and smooth. Okay, so that's now had about 10 minutes, and as you can see, it's just about breakable in places. It's not gone rock solid yet, but I can just about break that up. So now's the time to start sanding it. Just going to sand it to profile, and we'll come back. Okay, and I think that's now pretty much done. <laughs> Just gonna get a bit of a wipe off. Okay. And then straight away dry it. Okay. I don't want to get too wet. Wet? Because it will it absorb moisture. Okay. Until it's completely sealed. But as you can see, that's now running beautifully. There's no high edges there. A bit of work around here to do. Just pick some bits off. But that's no big, no biggie, and nice there. So. That's that patch now completely sealed. Um, I just give it about half hour or so to go right off. It won't want a lot. I lost the sticker on the front because um, the yeah the paintwork um, was coming off there, so I've lost that. But that's sort of a little bit irrelevant really for what for what it is. But. Okay, and that's now had um, two layers of primer. Daddy? Yes, buddy? Why you, why you don't talk what you chat? I've got to wear a mask, mate, because of, of the hume. That's all it is. It's a bit it's smelly. Hot. Yeah, I've got to wear a mask, mate. It's very important Are to... Are you uh, up now? We've got to let, just let that air out a bit now, mate. Yeah. Again? Two seconds, mate. Um, that's now had its two layers of coat. Now, there you go, please. It's a bit, just a bit smelly in here for you, buddy. All you can, I'll get you a drink for you. There you go. Yeah, two seconds I'll come back with you. So I'll let that just cure now for about 20 minutes or so and then we can then start to apply the top coat. But as you can see, that's not a bad coverage there. There's a few places in, in spots, but as I say, I'm not after showroom finishes. Um, there's a few places where it could probably do just a bit more sanding, but it's a lawn mower. I just want to just improve the appearance best I can. There's a bit to say I've missed. Let's run that in. Okay, I'll let that cure and I'll come back. Okay, so that's now had the final um, red coat done. There's no spots that I've missed that I can see. It all looks pretty good. I just want to remove these stickers of this masking tape. One there, and then one at the top. And now all I want to do is just give this now two coats of lacquer, and then that can then harden overnight. And there it is with the first coat of lacquer on. It wants one more coat to go yet, um, but. It's not bad, I mean it's, it's, it's far from perfect, but um, it's got a shine on it, 
um, the hole's been been repaired you can barely notice it I can see it's there in fact if anything, I can see where the um, the paint is actually flaked off but the actual hole itself that was there but that's in that area there that's now completely gone you can't even see that so I'm relatively happy with it just trying to move around a bit to get a better angle so there you go so one more coat of lacquer on there in about a half hour and that will be the final coat right so I've made a start just putting it back together uh, the axles are on um, gearbox is in obviously because axles was on back flaps on just got to put the springs on if you just uh, getting through it bit by bit I might have to go through the video at some point and just have a little look to see uh, where I'm missing some because I seem to remember I've got some little tiny bolts here with uh, little tiny um, centers on them and I know that I did mention where they go so I'll have to go back for the film and look at that right so that's now the um, height adjustment put on I had to re take the front and back wheels again just to sneak the bolts in behind the bar because the bolts go in uh, from the wheel end and then just to connect it on the spring on the top I can just show you quickly where that is so on the you've got a spring just here if you can see that let me get you down a bit <coughs> just in there so the spring goes one leg behind this bolt here it goes through and then on a tab here you just get a screwdriver and push it over the top and then that will then all fall into place okay that's now the height adjustment on it's all working it was a bit of an all up i must admit um so next thing i want to do is i want to put the um handlebars back on and then i can try to rig up this cable but I've made it myself and put the engine on all that sort of good stuff so the engine is just four the three bolts I've got a new blade boss coming or second hand blade boss coming off of eBay I picked up for about nine quid so that shouldn't be here till next weekend but either way I can get it all sort of um, up together ready so handles on and the engine on and that's now the engine on in all her glory which I'm quite pleased with let's just get a bit of a bit of a spruce it's uh, been laying on the shed floor for a little while. So this motor all runs, so I ain't gonna do a lot with this one at all, just a service. Uh, quite fortunate with that. I'm gonna spray the guard up and what have you, just to make it sort of look nice. The handlebars now all on, and the flat will work as it should. So next thing I want to do is start to hook up the cables over the other side. Right, what have we got? So we've got dead man's handle, which is quite straightforward. That just comes down here. Let me show you. Literally that just clips or goes through onto that one there. With a bit of a wiggle, pull it back, clip it on, and that's a dead man working that's nice and straightforward and simple with this i'm not going to do a um a drive cable fix on this one um purely because it's got a unit fitting down the bottom end of it so i'm actually going to purchase a cable for this instead same because the, the spring on the bottom i can't work around that one so it won't be a new new drive cable but a dead man's all working which is cool so what's left to put on, I'm going to put the blade on, but I can't do that until I get a blade boss. The belt's all on. So now it's time for a bit of a fire up, I suppose. Okay, and there it is. I think it looks kind of cool. Just got to do some bit of tightening up with it, but uh, the bulk of the machine's put back together. So I'm just going to fire it up for you now, just to show it all works. But you can see already it looks 10 times better than what it did before. Manual choke on there. Turn the fuel on, maybe. I'll get to it. Yeah. Pull, pull. So that's another good little fix. I still have to do a drive cable. Um, I've got a blade boss to come in and then that's it really i think yeah 
that's it so I'm quite looking forward to finishing that one off and getting it uh, out on the old uh, on the lawn so don't forget that the competition is still running for um, the mixed mowers and small engine nation um, coffee cup that will be drawn on uh, Thursday or Friday today is Monday so um, all you have to do for that one is in my Honda HRX video my most recent one is just tell me um, what item I had to replace at mixmowers01 at gmail.com and email that address and just put um, 200 subs in the subject and in the body of the email just write the answer what part I had to replace. We were drawn out on Friday and we're looking forward to uh, announcing the winners very soon. So thank you very much for watching me on this episode of Mixed Mowers. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you found it informative, especially using a fiberglass to repair the hole, which most people would normally throw away, so that's cool. And I hope to see you all again on the next episode very, very soon. Until then, take it easy. Do you feel the